Netflix has a brand new film for you to put on and then immediately forget about while you talk on the phone with your mom for an hour and a half. It's called Meet Me Next Christmas. How about no? And I checked it out because I hate myself and now I'm gonna talk about it for a few minutes. Come on, join me. If you find yourself liking the commentary and the jaded cynicism, feel free to subscribe to the channel. I post lots of movie reviews every week. Would love to have you stick around. It's no secret that Hallmark has been absolutely crushing it over the years with their holiday lineup. And so naturally, Netflix wants a piece of that pie. But they're gonna do it the Netflix way. Now I myself, not so much a connoisseur of the Hallmark holiday classics. I don't think I fall into the right demographic, but I know some guys that absolutely enjoy them pop them on every season. The word guys is doing a lot of heavy lifting there, but I wanted to give this one a chance. It's ranked number one right now on streaming for the platform. And just from the poster alone, I was a little confused. Wait, a black couple in a Christmas Hallmark movie? That seems off brand. Typically when I check these out from afar, my wife has them on while she's doing seven other things. It's always a couple middle-aged white folks who look somewhat similar to actors in Hollywood, but it's not them. It's the same formula every time. Small town area in buttfuck America, loves the holidays, loves Christmas. The rich, powerful guy or girl comes home for the weekend. They fall in love with an old fling. But then a third person comes into the mix, a little bit more unconventional, but there's sparks there. And next thing you know, it's Christmas every day for this couple. How magical. How absolute bullshit. Give people a little bit of hope that there's love for everyone out there, as long as you're middle-aged and white. <laughs> Netflix begs to differ. This is not your grandma's movie, folks, okay? We got a couple strong black leads. We have a trans person in here. We got a couple gay people. We got a drag crew in the mix. It's got diversity up the ass. But does it have a good story, a good message, good cinematography, good music, good characters? <laughs> Hell no. And that's the one thing it kind of has in common with the Hallmark stuff. Uh, there's there's going to be some spoilers in this. Not that there's anything to spoil. The movie's already spoiled just by existing. You're spoiled by watching it, not in the good way. Christina Milian plays Layla. She's the protagonist of this film. She's stuck at the airport away from her boyfriend for Christmas. Thankfully, while she's there, there's a good looking man to keep her company. They make a deal that if a year goes by and she's no longer with her stupid boyfriend, they're gonna meet up at a Pentatonix concert, the coolest band in town. Because even though Layla is, I guess, the protagonist of this movie, Pentatonix is really what the film's all about. It's a hour 40 advertisement for this band. Talented as they may be, I didn't, I didn't need a movie about them. Certainly not one that's wrapped inside of a shitty Netflix-esque Hallmark gift. Unfortunately, Layla is going to have a falling out with her boyfriend. He cheats on her. It's not good. It's an ugly situation. But there is a silver lining, fam. She can now be with that dream guy she met at the airport last year. The problem is, she doesn't have a ticket for the Pentatonix concert. What the fuck is she gonna do? In order to get a ticket, she turns to Teddy, a guy that works as a concierge at, uh, I don't know, some place that finds you tickets to concerts or something, and they will exhaust all avenues to get Cinderella to the ball. And those avenues consist of going to several different locations, meeting quirky individuals that may have a ticket, and finding themselves in precarious situations to get said ticket. <laughs> I can't wait for hilarity to ensue. You're gonna wait! Because there's no hilarity. It never ensues. Cocks on the table, uh, as the expression goes. I did not like this film, and I made it one hour and some change into it. Had to, had to fast forward after that, but uh, I know I'm not talking to an audience of people that actually watch this thing from beginning to end. That's an impossibility, friends. No, 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 no. This is, uh, this is one of those Hallmark Netflix Christmas movies. So you put it on, you sit on your phone, you look up once in a while, go, oh, that's, that's sweet, that's nice. Or, what, what are we doing now? Wow, how, how is this happening? And you rewind a little bit, and then you realize, eh, who cares? Uh, oh, the phone's ringing. Oh, the cookies are done. Oh, uh... Tanner's home from school, I better see what he needs. But I sat and suffered through an hour and some change of this shit. I watched as they went to the bar to meet with some sketchy dude who's gonna sell them the ticket for $800, even though they agreed upon $500 over the phone. Because this is for fate. Keep in mind, she had like a 
20 minute conversation with this guy at the airport. This is, this is what she's, the lengths she's willing to go to. Doesn't seem healthy at all. I watched as she pepper sprayed her buddy Teddy, who I knew right out of the gates she was going to be falling in love with. And this is where this whole story was going to go. It's not about the destination. It's about the lover you meet along the way. I rolled my eyes heavily as they went to the eccentric house with the multimillionaires who need them to track down an expensive purse because apparently they don't have any means to get said purse on Black Friday. So she's going to go over there and do it. There's only one left. How is this possibly going to shake out? Well, I'll tell you how. We find out there isn't actually a purse available except for the one that's in the case. And this is going to lead to the... I, I don't know. Why do I even talk about these movies? They're so stupid. They are put together with no effort at all. But anyway, there's an elderly Karen in the line and she finds out that the display case version of the purse is the only one that's actually at the store. Suddenly, the music kicks in for the first time in like 35 minutes. <laughs> and, and the old lady's like, I need that purse! And you're expecting something funny to happen. She shoves some people, they fly through a glass case, or she starts beating someone with another purse. Maybe a cat flies off a shoulder, runs under some legs of a person, trips them up, a dog gets loose, the whole place gets trashed. No, none of that happens. Instead, she goes, I want that purse! And, and, she, and the camera just kind of shakes a little bit with the music, and then that's the end of the scene. It's, it's a 10 second sequence. Uh, shortly after that, they track down another person that says the only way you're getting this ticket is if you win first prize at the lip sing competition that's going on down the street. So they have to get ready. They have to prepare for this thing, get all their moves, get all their lip singing, rocking, and they head down there. And it was at this point I said, no, I'm, I'm done. I think, uh, I think I've seen enough to make a judgment call. This movie sucks. Doesn't need to be watched. People will watch it. Apparently they are. It's ranked number one on Netflix, whatever that means. And everyone will collectively forget it exists within 24 hours. Maybe you find a chuckle here or there. I don't know. I really don't know your sense of humor. I didn't laugh at all. I rolled my eyes a lot. I thought it was just cheesy and stupid as hell. As far as the visuals go, this is another one of those Netflix movies where they're using the cameras and I don't think they know how they work. Because it is so freaking dark throughout the entire film. It's hard to see this movie. The lighting is so dim in this thing. Now, if you like Pentatonix, there is a few of their songs in there. They are a real band. This isn't one that was conjured up for the movie and then they can like sell their stuff separately. But no, they are a band. They have a couple songs in there. They are very talented. I wouldn't say they're the best actors because they are also part of the plot. Not only are they trying to get to that concert, but this group of people is tracking them the entire time. They have heard her story and they're hoping, they're rooting for her that she makes it to their concert. I don't know why they don't have a ticket they can give her or they can't just let her in. But w whatever, we don't have a movie if it's that easy, right? So we're gonna jump back to them once in a while as they're kind of stalking her on phones via like random people that have been filming this. I don't know how they're getting half of this shit, but it doesn't matter, it's stupid. Nothing about this movie makes any sense. I think if you've seen any Hallmark movies before, you should know exactly how this is gonna play out. And it plays out exactly how you expect and how I guessed it did. Cause I did fast forward to the end to see who she was with and yeah, it was. It was, the, it was the guy. It was the same guy. It, it was the same guy she was with the whole movie. Shocker. All right, that's Meet Me Next Christmas. Not to be confused with Meet Me at Christmas or Meet Me Christmas or Christmas Meetup or Christmas with the Cranks or Christmas in December or Christmas. Well, I guess Christmas is in December. I made some of those up, but they're probably mostly real. Let me know if you watched this one and enjoyed it immensely like I clearly did. Please, again, think of subscribing, liking the video and hitting that notification bell so these show up in your feed. Notification short course for notification. If you love what I'm doing and you're thinking about giving back for the holidays, maybe thinking about becoming a patron at patreon.com slash Adam does movies. There's different tier levels, a lot of exclusives over there. It helps me keep the show going. It's a lot of work, believe it or not, to just sit here and be miserable watching these crappy films. <laughs> I would appreciate it. I also have merch. Just launched a merch store. You can find t-shirts probably right under this video if you're lucky. All right. Hopefully I see you next time. Take care. Thank you.